zoax.net. Lesson 54, Binary, Octal, and Hexadecimal. To follow along with this lesson, create an empty console project and add a file named main.cpp to it as we did in lesson 1. We introduced binary as the method by which a computer stores numbers. The problem with binary representations is that they are not convenient for humans to read because they require over three times as many digits. For example, the number 628 requires only three digits in decimal. In binary, this is 100111100 for a total of ten digits. To address this issue, Computer programmers use number bases with larger powers of 2, like 8 and 16, which are known as octal and hexadecimal respectively. We will get into those in a minute. For now, let's look at a quick example of a binary program. Recall that binary representations use successive powers of 2 to represent each digit. In our first program, we have an integer that we assign the value 13. Then we print out both the binary and decimal formats. The function print binary outputs the 32 bits of an int. In it, we run through the bits from 31 down to 0. Inside the loop, we shift each bit into the 1's place. Recall that this is the equivalent of dividing by the corresponding power of 2. Then we apply the modulus operator to get either a 0 or a 1 for the 1's bit. Executing the program, we see the 32-bit binary representation for 13 and the ordinary decimal version. Notice that we have leading zeros in the binary representation. These zeros are not necessary, but they serve to emphasize the memory aspect of our int data type, since it is 32 bits long. The number 13 is equal to 8 plus 4 plus 1, and that is where these digits come from. In our second program, we introduce octal, which uses base 8 number representations to compress binary numbers to one-third the size. Since 8 equals 2 to the third, each octal digit represents three binary digits. Our second program looks very similar to the first one, except that we call print octal instead of print binary. The function print octal is similar to print binary with some slight modifications. Since octal contains three bits per digit, we only need 11 digits to represent 32 bits, so we run the for loop from 10 to 0. To get each digit, we shift by a multiple of 3 and apply the modulus operator with the value 8. Executing the program, we see the octal number displayed as two digits, 1 and 5. That is because 13 is 1 times 8 plus 5. One of the things that you might have noticed about the octal representation is that it is kind of awkward. Since 32 isn't divisible by 3, the top digit only encodes two bits. This problem extends to all of our integer types which use 8, 16, 32, and 64 bits, none of which is divisible by 3. For this reason, octal is seldom used anymore. Instead, hexadecimal, which is base 16, is almost exclusively used for bitwise data. Notice that each of the integer sizes that exist is neatly encoded in hex because they are all divisible by 4. One of the peculiarities of hexadecimal is that to represent digits 10 through 15, we need to use some additional symbols. In programming, we use the letters A through F. With this scheme, each hexadecimal digit encodes four bits like this. Our third program is similar to the last two, but it uses hexadecimal. The only difference is the print hexadecimal function and the call to it. The print hexadecimal function has a for loop that runs from seven to zero since it uses eight digits to encode 32 bits. Inside, we shift by multiples of 4, and then use a modulus of 16 to get the value of the hex digit. To display this value, which is between 0 and 15, we break it into two cases. For values that are less than 10, we simply output the value, which is a decimal digit in the range 0 to 9. For the values 10 or higher, we use the letter A as a base, and add the difference between the digit's value and 10 to it. This gives us the letters A through F, for the values 10 through 15. Executing the program, we see the value D as the only non-zero hexadecimal digit. This is what we would expect since D is used to represent 13. For our next program, we use all of the previous functions. In the main function, we have added calls to each print function. 
executing the program, we see the output for each representation. Notice that we have added spaces to our printing functions to align the output. So the 5 in the octal representation corresponds to the lowest three bits, while the D in the hexadecimal representation corresponds to the lowest four bits. The value 13 in the program is called a literal. This literal is given in decimal, but we can use octal and hexadecimal literals too. To use octal, prepend a zero to a number like this. Executing the program, we see that the octal representation looks like our literal. We can also use hexadecimal by prepending a zero and an x like this. Executing the program, we see the same thing again. Finally, we'll finish with this short program to demonstrate octal and hexadecimal output using stream formatting. We begin with the value 13, and then we output it in octal, hexadecimal, and decimal. We use the three-letter designations to set the numerical output format. Executing the program, we see what we would expect.